this is like options 101, right? And what I was talking about was the VIX. And so the, the VIX is an implied volatility index. So anytime you have an implied volatility, it's normalized. So take that divided by roughly 16, really divided by the square root of 252. And that will give you the implied move on an annualized basis. The implied daily move on an annualized basis. Taking that a step further, I would say, um, and this is for all my options traders out there, look at the spread and the ratio of implied versus realized volatility. That Say will it again. give you, pardon? Say that one more time. So I would like, I think it would be very helpful and something that I look at. Take a look at the implied volatility and if all you're trading, all the option trading montages will have, it'll be like IV. Mm -hmm. That just tells you what the implied, and I, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to sit on this. I'm, I'm going to spend some time here. That will tell you what the implied volatility is. The other half of that is what the realized volatility is. Implied is an, is a, is an assumption and an input into a model that kicks out what you, have, what you take as your options price. The realized volatility is how much that stock actually realizes and so if you continue to purchase implied volatility but the stock doesn't realize that mm -hmm. you might think you're winning but guys on the other side are also winning it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a zero -sum game so like i said i'm gonna you can tell me to shut up but i'm gonna spend a little bit of time here because i know yeah, keep going this is as powerful as that okay so for most people, retail investors, when you're buying a call or a put, you're buying a call because you think a stock is going to go up. You're buying a put because you think a stock is going to go down, and vice versa by, by selling or, or writing those particular options. So what I'm saying is, for me, the, the way that I grew up trading, and this is on the institutional side, you will look at the dollar price, and I'm like, I don't care what that is. You need directional exposure for you to win. I don't care whether the stock goes up, down, left, right, or anything in between. I'm betting because what I'm doing is I'm stripping out all of that and I'm trading volatility. So when you when you look at your your TD Ameritrade or E-Trade or man, now I got to say them all, uh, <laughs> Scott Trade, Schwab, uh, in, um, Interactive Robin Broker, Robinhood, yeah. all of them. None of none of them are better than any of the other ones. Mm -hmm. When, when you see your implied volatility there, what that is telling you is you take your price, your forward, your stock price, dividend assumptions, interest rates, blah, 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 all of this stuff, right? And what you can do is you can strip out, excuse me, you can strip out the implied volatility. And that's the most powerful piece. That's the most powerful input in terms of your option price. And so you may say, hey, Apple's a great stock. I'm going to buy calls. Whether it's at the money calls, in the money calls, upside calls, you're like, I want exposure to Apple stocks. The options only cost me five bucks. The stock trades at 400 bucks. This is a good trade. And I go, okay, that, that $5 that you just paid, that actually is a 160 ball. It's going to use a nice round number, implying that the stock is going to move 10% a day from now until that expiration. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sell you that call. I'm going to go buy the stock and I'm going to delta hedge. And I don't care if it goes up or down. As long as it doesn't go up or down, it's rate of change that I'm trading. As long as it doesn't go up or down by the 10% that you just paid for it, I win. Okay. And that's, and what, you're, that's what you're trading. Pardon? No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, and so I, I, I just, I, and that's why like the volatility that you're paying for these options is so critical. And, and I, you asked about it earlier, but I, I'm, I'm getting into it now, and I, I knew I'd get a chance to kind of to get to this. This is the nitty-gritty of options trading. So, and this is why I was, I was hesitant to give you a, a cut-and-dry answer in terms of how much my portfolio should be in stock and bonds or whatever, how much my portfolio should be in, in options, because it depends on what implied volatility you're paying. If you're paying an implied volatility that's, Go back and look historically. So, so uh, let me add another thing. So look at the implied volatility of a stock 
and look at the historical implied volatility. The same way that you look at a stock stock chart and look at the, the, the range of the stock. And I would say, uh, stock price is one thing. What we should probably look at is like the price to earnings ratio or price to earnings to growth. But some ratio, right, that tethers you to something, that gives you a base. And I'm going to keep coming back to that word, base. So go back and, and see, okay, this has had this implied volatility over the life cycle of this company or over whatever time period you think is applicable. And then look and see what, it's, what it is right now. If you're buying that stuff on the highs, then one, the, the, the amount that the stock has to move for you to finish in the money is much higher. Mm -hmm. You're probably better off just buying the stock if you're, if you're using options to take a directional view. That's, that's the first part, right? So options, look at your implied volatility, look at the realized volatility, and then look at where I mean, for me, like I'm, I'm looking at more statistics, look at what percentile those particular things are in. So if, if I'm seeing something that's in like the top, you know, decile, right? Like the, the top 10% of implied volatility, I probably don't want to buy that. The exact opposite in the bottom 10%. Most of the time it's going to be moving around like the median or the mean. But when you start to see, and then you're, and then if you, if you, it will also, you can put, do this in an Excel spreadsheet, but uh, average or Mean, median, you can do uh, standard deviation, STDEV, you can do variance. Excel will do all this for you. And if I'm, if I'm, you know, if I'm buying something in the top quartile or the top decile, I'm, no, no, thank you. I'll just buy the stock. If that's, if I'm playing it for a directional point of view. And the exact opposite if things are in like very low um, quartiles or, or percentiles. Um, the other thing is, so another thing for options is if you're long the stock and you notice that the implied volatility is super high, something that I like doing is selling calls. Even though you love the stock, it's not about the fact that, oh, I, I have to buy calls because I want the stock. The, the implied volatility is too high for that call, which is going to drive the higher the implied volatility and Guys, tell me if I'm getting too far in the weeds. No, you're good. Go ahead. You have, you have your delta, right? Your delta is your, it's many things, hedge ratio for one, but it's your probability of finishing in the money. And that takes me to the next question. So how do I pick, should it be in the money, at the money, mm -hmm. out of the money? All right. Check, look at the delta of that thing. 50 delta means coin flip. 50% that it's going to be in the money, 50% that it's not going to be in the money. And the lower the delta, the lower the probability of the lower the probability of those things finishing in the money. Now, I th and I think this is the VIX moment. The, the higher the implied volatility drives your delta back towards 50. So the more expensive the option will drive your delta back towards 50. Those are the times where I'm not playing options that are close to the money because the implied volatility is so high. But the out of the money options, it means that that delta can change so much higher and get driven to 50. So a 20 delta, if I'm going to play options and, I'm gonna, and it's going to be a, a lot, a lot of implied volatility, I'm probably going to play something out of the money because it will at least pull my delta closer to 50 as long as that implied volatility stays high. My graduates from my school being Forbes, backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> a mic drop. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs>